All right, this is going to be a snail pattern. Uh, for some reason, a lot of people are just not aware that snails are a prime food source for a lot of fish in especially still waters. And so I've been messing around with a, a different style of na uh, snail pattern. And uh, this is the one I've settled on, and uh, I've used it a few times, and it's actually done fairly well. So I'm starting off with the uh, Daiichi X710. Uh, these are awesome hooks. They're strong, sh sharp, probably the sharpest uh, nymph hook, and then a 2.8 millimeter tungsten bead. It could be black, black nickel. Um, and then what I want to do is make sure that I leave some room at the head in front of the bead. So I'm going to start my thread right where I want the bead to basically butt up against. Like that. You don't want to crowd the eye at the end. You'll see this is because that's where we're going to dub things. So we'll build up a little stoppage point for the bead. Now I'll work my way right before the uh, bend of the hook. And this, this fly is actually really simple. We're going to use some JSON nymph skin. And uh, this is the black color. They come in a combo pack, so when you buy one pack, you get pretty much a, uh, a supply of almost any color you'd want. And I'm going to snip it to be tapered, and then tie that in right at the, the end there. And I'm going to work my way back up to where the bead is. And then what I'll do is I'm going to pass my thread in front of the bead and just tie that off right where I want it, right there. And so you want oh, about uh, an eye width behind the eye of the hook between the bead. And now what we do with this uh, nymph skin is the first few wraps are going to be fairly tight and you just want to overlap because we're making the shape of a snail's shell. shell. So we're going to tighten the first couple three and then loosen as we go and that gives the uh, the material here a little bit more uh, thickness without being overly stretched. And again this is this the typical snail shell uh, shape. And now we're going to get back to the bead and then the last wrap is going to be over the top of the bead and you may you may end up uh, on top on the back doesn't matter in this case I'm right where I want to be and so I just grab that pull it a little bit tight and then wrap it off and then a couple of really quick wraps in front and we're gonna snip that off okay so that doesn't look super snell shaped but it is getting that way so I'm going to come back in here and uh, we're going to put some dubbing in but before we do that I'm going to add some uh, UV clear fly finish and this is going to help me build up the body and so in order to do that I use the thin uh, finish from Loon and this just a uh, very thin coating uh, the thin won't run on me as much, and that's why I use that instead of the flow. And the thick is, I don't need as much. And so we just, uh, a very light coating all the way around, and we're creating the shell on this snail. Okay, now we've got a little bit more of the snail shape. And I'm just going to kind of rotate that back and forth, and then just give it the zap. Now that the shape is built up, I'll take some of the flow, which is the really thin stuff, and add a little bit more shaping to it if I, if I want to add a little bit more pronounced uh, upper area. And that also helps to create some uh, cool looking uh, uh, color variations because you get some transparency there. And uh, So we're just going to go around there and build that up a little bit more. 
and then also a little bit more along the whole body just really lightly uh, that gets rid of the tackiness so we'll just spread that around with our craft stick All right, and then just one final step, we're going to take a little bit of black eye stub and just a very little bit because you don't have a whole lot of room up here. And butt that up against where we stopped with the UV and then whip finish. And that uh, dubbing just represents the little snail peeking his head out of his house. And there we go.